30 years ago, when I came here as a young delegate for the government of Jamaica to the Uruguay round negotiations, I was very young and I hoped and had passion for the future. I still do. But 30 years ago is a very long time. And it led, of course, the Uruguay round to the Marrakesh Agreement establishing the World Trade Organization. Having done that, we are now in a position where we're really viewing what, what does the WTO stand for, where is it, and where are we going? At the time when we were negotiating the Uruguay round, we were looking at issues such as intellectual property rights, inclusion of services trade, looking at a single undertaking, which means everything or nothing, and also setting up a dispute settlement body. Now, we're looking at more existential issues, issues that will affect the future of our children and our grandchildren for decades to come. Now I believe, in 2022, we're at another pivotal turning point in history. The WTO has incredible decisions to make. There are hard choices that member states have to make, and those choices will determine where we go. The world has dramatically changed in the last 30 years. The advent of the internet has revolutionized how trade takes place, how information is passed, and how consumers engage with producers. We've also seen the pandemic, which has tilted the world on its axis. How has that changed how the world also deals with issues of health and trade? We saw what happened with COVID and the export restrictions that were implemented by many countries in an attempt to protect their economies. The issue of trade and health is something that is going to have to be dealt with. The issue of trade and climate change. We're now in what we call the three C's, COVID, climate change, and conflict. All three are existential, all three are life altering, and all three have become part of the discussion in the WTO. Member states need to be able to look at all these issues and make decisions that will move us forward in terms of global trade. It's not easy, but it's necessary. And we do things not because they're easy, but rather because they are required. And we make choices as delegates, as organizations, and as people for the future generation. As a woman, 30 years later, I am happy to see more women. <laughs> I'm happy to see that there are a few more of us. There could be more, but the fact that three women are leading the three trade organizations in the Geneva Trade Hub is at least a very good signal of where we're going. What's also important is how do we continue to ensure that gender is part of the discussions in trade. The inequality between genders continues to be a problem and we need to be able to address that and ensure that the issues of inclusion are also part of the trade dialogue. Thank you and I look forward to the discussions and hopefully at the end we will have a great result.